Hello, potions and potables. My name is TBS Guy, and we are still in the process of going through the oldest champions in League of Legends in order to catalog the state of their lore and their character design before Riot finally managed to get around to actually updating them. This is uh, sort of part of my ongoing perpetual project to kind of, I won't say shame, but yeah, kind of a little bit shame uh, Riot for the massive holes and the massive deficiencies in the ways in which that they have handled their lore and their characters over the years. While they have had tremendous success with their competitive game modes, well, I'm never not gonna be poking them with a stick over the ways in which they have managed to mishandle a lot of their characters. Last time, we looked at Twisted Fate and his like the, the his relative success story as a very old champion for Riot to bring him a little bit more into line with the modern game and give him a few lore updates and a little bit of character development and stuff like that over the course of time. Today, we're looking at the other end of the scale. We're looking at a character who has... I don't think he has the least lore of any champion in League of Legends. That honor might still go to Shaco or Fiddlesticks, but he certainly comes close. So we're going to have to ask a question here. What is the deal with Singed? And what's interesting about him in particular is that Singed is actually profoundly well-connected to the rest of the wider League of Legends mythology. He's a, he's a big part of the League of Legends universe. He's involved with the origin stories of a number of characters. But as for the man himself, well, his bio is this. That's it. I, I do believe only Fiddlestix and Shaco have bios that might be shorter than his. And it is a peculiar type of an oversight. Now, to be fair, there is a short story from Singed's perspective. And by the way, the possessive on Singed is really Singed's perspective is really difficult. But there is a short story from his perspective called Engineering the Nightmare, specifically about how he is the person who created Warwick. He took a man from the streets, essentially, put a bunch of chemicals and poison and shit in him, and, like, put machine stuff on him, and transformed him into a monster. And this is the journal, the medical journal, that Singe used, um, and kept as part of that experiment. Unfortunately, it's not really Singed's story at all. If it's anything, it's much more of a sort of brief narrative from his perspective where we get a little bit of insight into the idea that, oh, he's very ruthless and he doesn't care about ethics, which is not... But we don't really get anything about the man himself. It's about Warwick. It's about how Warwick came to be, what happened to him, why he is the way he is. And as for Singed, well, it doesn't really do much of a job of characterizing the man. And that's sort of the interesting dichotomy that's at play with him, is that he's involved in the origin stories of characters like Riven. And because he's involved with the origin story of Riven, he's also involved with the origin story of Yasuo. He's involved with the uh, Noxian campaign against Ionia, which has become like tremendously influential, which means he's tangentially connected to the stories of characters like Karma and... Um, uh, Irelia, I was about to say Lahui, that's not the one. Irelia, and I believe he also has some connection to the origin story of a character like Master Yi. And... As I said, he's literally the creator of Warwick, and that might at some point give him some kind of lore connection with Soraka. We're not really clear on where they're going to take her in the future. Probably not, but my point being, he's tremendously connected to the universe of League of Legends. He's an incredibly important character to a lot of other characters, but as for his bio, well... Singed is a deranged chemist from Son who is as brilliant as he's immoral. A child prodigy, he taught himself the ways of chemtech and biological experimentation, constantly testing the boundaries of conventional science. For over a century, he has continued to refine his art, having extended his natural lifespan through, through a mix of volatile chemicals and extensive self-performed surgery. He lets nothing, not morality, and certainly not other people, come between him and the knowledge he seeks. That's it. That's, that's the extent of what there is to know about Singed. Now, his blurb does give us, like, it slightly rewords... His bio, but it doesn't really tell us anything new. Singed is a son and alchemist of unmatched intellect who has devoted his life to pushing the boundaries of knowledge with no price, even his own sanity too high to pay. Is there a method to his madness? His concoctions rarely fail, but there appears to many that Singed has lost all sense of humanity, leaving a toxic trail of misery and terror in his wake. This is profoundly thin and has absolutely no character in it. And that's really the, the thing about Singed that kind of gets to me is that he doesn't have a character. We know that he's a ruthless scientist who will stop at nothing to advance the cause of science-ish. Like, he wants to test the boundaries of conventional science. He... he wants the... he... there's some knowledge that he seeks. Be, because why? Why... why does he seek this knowledge? The only clue we get to it, 
is, For what is my work, if not an attempt to reveal life's hidden truths through science? Again, this is like the vaguest possible characterization of a person with a character like Victor, for example, who has very much the same concept. He has this relentless drive towards improving humanity, towards, you know, exploring the boundaries of science and finding some way to make up for the weaknesses and the pains in the human flesh and stuff like that. With Victor, there is a coherent motivation. He has a mission to improve the world, and in his pursuit of this mission, he becomes so single-minded that he becomes a kind of anti-villain sort of character, someone who is profoundly dangerous to the world, but not because he particularly considers, considers himself cruel or evil. With Sin, it's just like, yes, I am desperate to reveal life's hidden truths through science. But why? But that doesn't answer the question of why is his science so cruel? Why is it so monstrous? Like, why is he specifically fixated on creating Chimera like Warwick? Why is why is that where he's pursuing the bounds of science? That in, in the sense that he has to pursue science where he drags people off the street and turns them into monsters. Like, there's other brand. Like, why is he not an astronomer or? A physicist, or why is he not engaged in other branches of, of science? Why is it this particular pursuit? Why is it these particular fascinations that get to him? Why does he run around with a giant bottle of poison on his back? Like, why, why is that the expression of his dedication to science? Why is he the dude who creates, you know, chemical weapons for Noxus? As opposed to the dude who creates, like, really good catapults for Demacia. Like, why is it not ballistics or some, like, why is it not any other branch of science? Why is he not a, a specifically a marine biologist and he's pushing the bounds of marine biology science? Why is it this stuff? Now, again, this comes back to the moment of Singe creation. Singe's creation back in 2009, where he was... <clears throat> I mean, like we've mentioned many, many times before, he was one of those characters where it's like, just grab a stereotype of some sort out of pop culture, slap some League of Legends branding on it, and put it in the game. There wasn't really a lot of thought put to why the dude might want to do what he does. And that comes across, as I say, in his updated, in his current lore state, and indeed in his older lore states, there really, there's never been much to the guy except that he's super into science except only the kind of science that's really horrifying and monstrous, and then he kills people with it. And I, you can probably tell that I'm not super impressed <laughs> with Singed as a character, because there really isn't... There isn't one. He doesn't have a character. He doesn't have a personality. There's no underlying anything going on with him. He doesn't seem to have any kind of internal life or coherent motivation. <clears throat> And um, when I talk about motivation, by the way, I don't specifically mean that he's, like, motivated as a person. Like, he's, hey, I get up early in the morning, I go out on my jog, and I'm in the office by 8.30, and I'm working hard. And, like, not that kind of motivation. When I say something is, needs to be motivated with a characterization, that means there needs to be <clears throat> some reason, some semblance of agency behind why the person behaves the way that they do. For instance, if a person is pr profoundly lazy, like if a character is profoundly lazy, that laziness can be motivated by, for instance, if they have been privileged all their lives and they have never had to struggle for anything, then those character traits motivate their laziness, if you see what I mean. For Singed, he's someone who really, really wants to do mad science, but he has no motivation to do so. There's, there's no underpinning understanding of why he's dedicated himself so specifically to doing this stuff. And again, it comes down to he's an old champion and they didn't really put a lot of thought into them back then, but what's galling about it is that Singed is still so so profoundly connected to so many characters in League of Legends. Like, there are so many characters in League of Legends who, in to some extent, trace their origin story as characters back to <clears throat> the Noxian invasion of Ionia, like Akali is one of them, where Singed's war crimes and his, you know, chemical weapons are a huge part of the reason why they decide to become who they are. He is a motivation for other people, but he has no motivation himself. And that's, it's such a weird oversight. Like, you'd think when he was the villain and the originator and the, 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 the antagonist in so many people's stories, he would have some kind of story for himself that Riot would have gotten around to that, but no, not so much. So that's a lot of the negatives uh, out of the way, and now we get to talk about some unusual positives, because I don't think Singed has a particularly good character design, necessarily. 
but I do think he has a very interestingly unique one. Like, I do look at Singed and it's like, I can see lots of elements of the character that it could could have been taken out of multiple other games. Like, for instance, like I see a lot of, um, especially when you look at his character model, I see a lot of Warcraft 3 in there because that was the primary um, sort of aesthetic precedent for League of Legends back in the day when it was first released. I see a lot of Warcraft 3 in there. I see, like, the the, the idea of sort of the, the bald, bug-eyed madman with the ba bandage around his mouth and sort of bandaged up buddy. Yeah, that, I've seen that stuff before. I've seen, you know the giant chemical bottle um, as, as an aspect of the character design. I've seen that before. I've seen the thing of carrying around a potion. I've seen that as an aspect of the character design before. I've seen spiked shields, but the combination and the particular mix of attributes that comes together to form Singed's character design is genuinely quite unique. It's, it's something that I really don't feel like I've seen anything that looks specifically like this, where you could say, oh, this is just a version of that in a lot of other media that I've ever really looked at. And that's good like that those are all good things that you have a character who is recognizably from this game like an who is recognizably of League of Legends and not of something else filtered through a League of Legends IP lens <clears throat> on the other hand his character design doesn't really fit his gameplay now this is something we don't talk a lot about in this particular series of videos because I generally consider that the gameplay and the stuff that happens on the rift is not really canonical to the League of Legends, the game. Like, if, if a character has, like, five, four abilities on the Rift, that doesn't mean that they can't do other stuff with that magic in the lore. Like, Misfortune is really good with guns, but in the lore, she can do more stuff than shoot up into the sky and bullets rain down and just spraying bullets all over ahead of her and bouncing bullets. Like, she can do other stuff as well. So the abilities aren't, like, canonical to who the character is. But here we have to talk about gameplay communication. And the thing is, Singed is a tank, and he's not just a tank, but he's one of the most annoying, difficult, unkillable, trolly tanks in the entire game. But that ain't exactly what he looks like, is it? He He's this spindly, skinny, small-looking, gaunt creature that has a giant shield, sure, and he has the big bottle on his back that makes him more bulky, but he doesn't really look like he's that tough. He doesn't really look like he's that big and bulky, so the gameplay and the character design are a little bit at odds here in terms of what's being communicated. It's not terrible. Like, it's not it's not completely awful. It's not like Mordekaiser, where it's like, maybe the dude who's carrying a giant mace and covered in a giant spike armor and looks like a giant juggernaut shouldn't be like a magic damage dealer who isn't necessarily that tanky. Like, maybe that shouldn't be the way that... But it's still, there is a disconnect there. And there's also a more substantial disconnect in that Singed's primary game mechanic, like the one that's more than anything else the character is about, is the poison trail. But look at his character as it is right now. Look at the character as he looks just in his base model and tell me what part of that communicates that one of his primary attacks is a gas attack. There really isn't, like, we, you would expect that he had some kind of funnel or some kind of aerosolizer and, and like, something that would be associated with expelling gas of some kind or expelling air or expelling fumes or expelling some kind of noxious something something. But he doesn't really have that. He has a giant bottle out of which the poison fumes come and that sort of, kind of, ish works. But again, it's not really clearly communicated. It's not communicated as clearly as, you know, in case a character has a sword, therefore they hit you in the face with a sword and it hurts. It's 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 rather badly communicated. And the other um, couple of iconic abilities, for instance, his flip ability, his ability to take you and flip you over his head. What part of his character communicates his ability to do that? Like that, that is one of the things that he does because the shield is a shield. It's not like a, a, a stick or a, you know, spatula <laughs> that you can scoop you over the head with. He doesn't really look like a dude who throws people around. And yet that's part of his gameplay kit. Not very well communicated at all by the character design. And the same thing goes for his mega adhesive. Now, the mega adhesive makes a lot more sense because Singed carries a bunch of bottles and stuff around. So it makes sense that he could throw stuff on the ground. But when you look at him in game, the mega adhesive comes out of the big bottle on his back, the same bottle that also expels the poison. So what does the bottle do? It just does all of the things, I guess, and the potion he has in his hand doesn't do anything. And then there's his ultimate, and the ultimate is kind of the thing where I feel like the biggest disconnect between his character design 
and his abilities come. Because the ultimate is a version of the Jekyll and Hyde idea, the insanity potion. It's a potion that he can take to temporarily become much more powerful and dangerous. And that is like the staple of mad science. That's the thing that, oh yeah, Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, we know this one, we've seen it before. Take a giant potion, take some kind of magic potion, become very powerful for a short time, very dangerous. But he takes the potion and he, nothing really happens. He just kind of makes a noise. And then he runs around a little faster. And the, the, some particle effects go off around him, but it does nothing to his characters. And again, this one comes down to he's an old champion. They didn't have the tech back in the day to implement any kind of physical transformation alongside the ability and stuff like that. But it also really isn't communicated in his character design that that's the thing that's going on with him. Again... Typically, when you have the like, first of all, his mouth is covered. His his mouth he, he's his ultimate involves him drinking a potion, but his mouth is covered. Yeah, okay, so that's a thing, but it's also a an aspect of the Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde thing where the Jekyll persona is supposed to be less threatening than the Hyde persona. But the thing about Singed is that between all the spikes and the giant bottle and the spiky shield. And, you know, the spikes on his boots that... Why would you have spikes on your boots, by the way? That's... Wh why would you have that on your boots? He already looks like Mr. Hyde. He doesn't look like a Jekyll. He, he doesn't look like he needs to transform in order to become more monstrous or more dangerous. So, yeah, there's, a, there's a big disconnect there. And by the way, part of the reason why we're talking for so, much, so long about his abilities is because... The, he... I mean... It's not like there's a lot to talk about here. <laughs> um, and that's really the thing of... Singed is one of those characters who is desperately in need of some kind of a visual update to bring his character model up to par with modern League of Legends champions. And he's in desperate need of some kind of a lore update to give him any kind of a personality or any kind of interesting theme beyond just he's a mad scientist because reasons. But he's also one of those champions who's not really a priority because he works just well enough. He's he, he works just fine enough. He's just he's not a big enough problem to really be worth spending a whole ton of time and resources looking into fixing this specific one when there are so many more important problems hanging around all across the margins of the game that Riot might justifiably think that you know it's better spent that they spend their, their time, money and resources on those rather than to this guy who is who's just functional and works perfectly fine and isn't really much of an issue. He's just a placeholder character in so many ways. Like, that's really the thing I feel like with Singed when I read his bio, when I see his character design and, and his and his abilities and stuff and how, how little cohesion there is between any of it, I feel like I'm looking at a placeholder asset from a game's development process. Like, you know, when they, in the development of a video game, when you have, okay, we need a character who can do these things. Let's just make some kind of crappy placeholder. We haven't thought it through. It just, it just needs to be there and do this thing. And then we'll come back to it later and then we'll fix it. So it actually looks good. He looks like a placeholder asset that someone forgot to actually update by the end because it was like, that works fine, just move on. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of Sin. I, I'm a... <laughs> I've been very, very negative about him, but here's the thing. I really, really like Singed's connections to other characters. I really, really like that there is genuinely a character in League of Legends who made Warwick, like, who's responsible. Like, that Warwick wasn't just made by some off-screen mad scientist who he immediately killed, and we never have to worry about him again. That there is the possibility of a character connection between the two, of a story being told about their relationship to each other, that we have both a Frankenstein and a Frankenstein's monster in the game that you could maybe develop some narrative around. I really like that. I really like that a character like Riven, for example, had her faith in Noxus shattered, when they decided to use the chemical weapons that Singed produced. That there is a moral conflict between her, like, because it's not that Riven had a problem with waging war or killing people, it's that she had a problem with the particular methods employed by people like Singed. And that, that there, there's a moral conflict where you can explore what is Singed's relationship with the ways in which his inventions are used to cause unfathomable trauma to the world versus how would Riven confront him about that? Like, how, how does she formulate her opposition 
to his behavior, to his perhaps extremely highly pragmatic utilitarian view that, oh, well, it's easier than having a long drawn out, like, there, there's so much potential for stuff to be done there. There's so much potential for, like, the nation of Ionia to have a really complicated, like, to, or rather not complicated, but an extremely antagonistic relationship towards Singed, just as, like, a rallying symbol for the entire nation that we will not let the crimes of Singed go unpunished, as, like, you could do all kinds of things with him because he is so jacked in to so many aspects of League of Legends lore, but Riot have never done anything with it, and that is the crux of my disappointment. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, uh, if you feel free to hit the like button, uh, you can also do the subscribe, then pull up the bell icon, blah, 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 YouTube, YouTube, blah, 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 YouTube stuff, blah, blah. Also, I have a Patreon <clears throat> that you can support if you are so inclined. There's some perks over there, and if you have a dollar that you don't need, then I, or any other creator that you like, we genuinely appreciate that one dollar. It, ge it genuinely does help. I, I, I say this every once in a while, but sometimes I get messages from people who like feel bad that they're not able to support the Patreon or that they're they feel bad that they're not supporting with more. Please, for the love of God, don't feel that way ever. This is it's voluntary. It's for people who can give a little money without inconveniencing themselves or hurting themselves somehow. Please never, ever feel bad about it. It's enough that you watch the videos. So that it's an option if you want it, if you can't or if you're not willing to, that's completely OK. Watching the video is enough. Huh. There is also, in case you didn't like this video and you have watched this far into it, in which case you're weird, there is a dislike button that you can press. But I will warn you that the dislike button contains within it a very potent concoction that upon contact with the human flesh will grant you power power to do what you have never dared to do in your life, power to be the person who you have always secretly desired to be, power to act in the world without the various constraints of petty human morality, power to be greater than any other creature on this world has ever been. But once that power is exhausted, once you awaken from the slumber of unfettered master mentality, well, you will have to reckon with the persons that you became under the influence of the dislike button. My apologies to the nation of Germany, and thank you very much for watching. <laughs>